Now, two pigeons bemoaning the fact you can stream DirecTV satellite-free. These humans can stream all the top-rated national news channels on DirecTV, and now with no satellite dish. This just in. Weather, sports, election coverage. DirecTV has it all, but something is missing. The satellite dish. What are you doing? I'm reporting the news. Back to you, Bob. Here's some news. You're a buffoon. Stream the top-rated national news channels. No satellite dish. Visit directtv.com. Internet required. Top rated news based on 2023 Nielsen ratings. Today on CityCast Philly, cookies are having a moment in Philly, especially down in Rittenhouse. Levain Bakery is opening a store this week, joining several other shops that are baking on sweet success. Our Hey Philly newsletter editor, Asha Prihar, looked into how this center city neighborhood is becoming a cookie hotspot. It's Wednesday, October 9th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Hey, Asha. Hi, Trina. So last month, I went on a cheesesteak quest, and <laughs> you haven't eaten as many cookies as I've eaten <laughs> cheesesteaks, but you really focused your reporting on four different cookie shops. Tell us about these cookie shops. So there are two that are open right now, and then there are two that have yet to be open in Philly. Okay. The first one that opened um, back in November 2023 is called Blueprint Cookies. It's a small chain based in Florida, but the owners of this franchise are originally from Bucks County. Um, oh, locals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They kind of, um, they had tried the cookies when they were down in Florida and met the CEO because um, he was a friend of a family member. And they were like, wow, these are so good. We just have to bring them to Philly. Um, so that's nice. kind of how they landed here. The second one that is currently open in Philly is called Chip City Cookies. And they were founded in New York City in 2017. And then they came into Philly just this summer in August. So when is Taylor Chip and Levine Bakery going to come to the cookie scene? Taylor Chip is based in Lancaster County. They are looking at opening this fall in Philly, in both Rittenhouse and another one in Fishtown. They were supposed to open last month, but they ran into some permitting issues, so they haven't mm. quite opened up yet. Their kind of thing is like that they're made with all natural ingredients, including Pennsylvania-made butter. Ooh. And then Leven is based in New York City. They've been around for a long time, about three decades at this point, but they actually just started expanding to cities other than New York three years ago. They started with a D.C. store and they've since expanded to places like Chicago and to Boston. So now they are looking to Philly and they're actually going to be opening their newest store in Rittenhouse Square this Friday. I did see Levin when I was downtown last week, and it looks like bougie. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for this. It's like gourmet. It's gourmet cookies. This is neat. Yeah. Um, okay. So why are cookie companies flocking to Rittenhouse? In general, there's been this kind of proliferation of gourmet cookie chains across the country over the past couple of years. I spoke with the people who run some of these companies or some of these shops, and they told me a lot of them landed there after maybe targeting a few different neighborhoods in the city or just generally looking for space in Philly and then finding that Rittenhouse was a good fit. Um, but a lot of them had really good things to say about Rittenhouse and how it's a very great place for food brands to land in Philly and find their footing. Um, Interesting. The CEO of Taylor Chip, um, Doug Taylor, he told me that, you know, if you're just if you're trying to open a food business in Philly and you want to make a splash, Rittenhouse is the place to be. So it's kind of it seems to be seen that way by these companies. I wonder if it's because it's also a lot of food traffic there, too. Rittenhouse is on Walnut Street mm -hmm. and there's also a lot of retail down there, too. Retail and, you know, boutique, like, mm -hmm. workout. You can do boxing and yoga and Pilates. So it's a lot happening down there. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot of that sort of high-end retail in that area. So, you know, I think it makes sense that places that would be charging, like, 5 or $6 for a cookie would, like, 
feel like they would have clientele there because, you know, if you're spending hundreds of dollars at Lululemon or the Apple store, then like what's, what's the five cookie? More? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so are the cookie companies concerned, though, about a saturated market? You know, this is something that I was super curious about when I started looking into this trend because it just seems like it's such a specific thing. Like it's not like just general dessert shops or something like that, right? And they're all like kind of in this one place. Like, is this going to be like Froyo, like where lots of places open across the country and then sort of close after a couple of years? Um, but none of the business owners who I spoke to seemed super worried about the competition. Um, and I think for a lot of them, it kind of came down to that they think that their product or their service is going to stand out in one way or another. Right. They've also pointed to cookies as a sort of classic food, like sort of like a, a staple, something that's like widely loved by many. Some of them sort of made the point that, you know, it's possible for other food businesses to coexist with similar food businesses. Like there are lots of pizza shops. There are lots of sandwich shops. Um, and True, that's a good point. The people who run these places, they don't seem worried. I guess we'll have to wait and see like how it goes once all four of these places are opened. So what types of styles of cookies are they baking? Are they serving up? What did you come across in your journey? That is a great question. The commonality, I would say, between all of these places is that their cookies are huge. Like you're not you're not paying five bucks for a little cookie. Leven, they're kind of like a more static menu type place. Um, they've got a handful of options, mostly some kind of chocolate chip. Um, they also have like oatmeal raisin. But what they're known for is kind of these like lumpy type cookies that are sort of crispy on the outside and like super gooey on the inside. Mm, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and Taylor Chip also kind of goes for that like crispy outside, gooey inside kind of cookie. But um, sort of what's different about them versus Leven is that they've got like two dozen flavors at all times. So they've got flavors like Brookie or Lava Cake or S'mores, Salted Caramel Pretzel snickerdoodle and so on there are just a lot of different ones and then chip city they also have a lot of flavors and uh they rotate through them weekly they've got sort of like a handful of flavors that are their regulars that they have all the time and then they've got a set of flavors that sort of change every week blueprint is also more of a rotating menu type place they rotate their flavors every month and at both chip city and blueprint i think what you get like in terms of style and like texture of cookie depends a lot on what the specific flavor is because they have different base doughs um so the cookies that i tried at chip city when i was there i tried their confetti cookie which was kind of like a sugar cookie with like sprinkles in it pretty basic um and i, I wouldn't say like the one that i got wasn't super gooey it was but it was like chewy for sure and then I've had a decent number of cookies from Blueprint since I've kind of been going. I've gone there a couple of times since uh, they first opened last year. Um, but their chocolate chip cookie is really, really good. They have great chocolate. Um, it's not like gooey inside in the way that like Levan is a gooey inside, but it's like it's definitely soft. It depends whether like at Blueprint you can ask for it either heat it up or just get it room temperature. So how the texture is depends a lot on like how you're eating it. But the cookies that I've had from Chip City and Blueprint have both like reheated really well. So they're great. Like since they're such big cookies, like you might want to split it in half, eat half then, take it home. They're great for that. All four of these have some form of vegan or um, no gluten options on the menu. So there's hopefully something for everyone at one of these places. I mean, depending on your, your palate, of course. More on this cookie boom after the break. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. October is the season for wearing masks and costumes, but some of us feel like we wear a mask and hide more often than we want to at work, in social settings, around family. Therapy can help you learn to accept all parts of yourself. Therapy has been helpful for me to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. 
it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Take off the mask with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash citycast today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash CityCast. Hi, this is David Plotz of CityCast. Have you thought about a gift for yourself this year? One that has the power to help you grow and learn and become a better version of yourself? Give yourself the gift of language by getting Babbel. With quick 10-minute lessons handcrafted by language experts, Babbel gets you talking a new language in three weeks because talking is the key to really knowing a language. And that's how Babbel approaches it. It's designed for real conversation. So I have a trip to France planned with my girlfriend. Was it inspired by the Olympics? Yes, it was. And it's given me the chance to revive my old high school French. And it's so fun to catch back up with the vocabulary I'd forgotten, to remember all the food, for example. I'm in a lesson on ingredients, so I'm gonna make crepes with butter and sugar. Avec sucre et de beurre salé, on va se régaler. We're gonna have a feast. They learned this great new French expression too. J'en ai l'eau à la bouche. That means I have water in the mouth. That means it's mouth watering. Love it, love French. Anyway, Babbel gets you talking, and studies from Yale and Michigan State University and other leading universities prove that it works. So here is a special holiday deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for CityCast listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash citycast. Rules and restrictions may apply. In your travels, did you notice if there was a, I don't know, like a Philly cookie style that was being presented or being served? Is there like a specific Philly cookie that we can eat? I don't think I've seen anything like that. Kind of the the cookies that these chains offer are usually pretty standardized from location to location. So the cookie you'd get at Blueprint in Rittenhouse Square is going to be pretty much the same as the cookie you get in Blueprint in Florida. So I don't know whether like these are really the place to go if you're looking for a like very like Philly cookie. I mean, we've got, you know, Insomnia in Philly. That's a local Love brand. <laughs> um, I don't know. When I think like Philly cookie, I think one of the the first cookies from a local place that I tried when I moved here was famous 4th Street cookies in Reading Terminal Market. I kind of just think like local Local Philly cookie company. Oh, 4th Street. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, these uh, new spots in Rittenhouse are the place to go if you're like trying to get like a very Philly experience. OK, well, this seems like a possible way for maybe a new cookie company to come in and maybe create a Philly style cookie. But <laughs> let's help them out a little bit. If we could create our own Philly style cookie, what would it look like? What would it taste like? I've got some ideas. Ooh, that's a great question. I feel like, you know, local bakeries do stuff for like Philly sports and whatnot. Like, you oh, know, yeah. like it's like easy to yeah, do. Yeah, right? like that's very low hanging fruit. All right, here are some ideas. We can do like a cheesecake hmm. because the basic ingredients of a cheesecake is cream cheese. And mm. we all use cream cheese. <laughs> well, maybe not all of us, but. But it's a popular, like, spread on our bagels. And I feel like Philadelphia cream cheese represents Philly, Philly even though it was established in New York. <laughs> um, but I feel like cheesecake cookies would be good. Yeah. And the word cheesecake sounds a lot like the word cheesesteak, cheesecake, which I is, you, were getting there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, associated with Philadelphia. I could see that. I could see that. I think that's a good okay. idea. How about, and this one's for you. I know you love this food. I or know snack. where you're going with this. Pretzel, pretzel flavor cookies. Huh. Pretzels are definitely great. I feel like in a sweet form, we got like cinnamon sugar. Mm -hmm. Pretzel. Chocolate covered pretzels. Like chocolate covered. Oh my God. I would definitely eat like a chocolate covered pretzel cookie. That that would be really good. How about this one? 
tasty cake flavors. Ooh. Okay. You're, bring you're in, on to something. Bring in the icon. It could be like a collab, too. Bring this iconic snack, and it has great cookie flavors butterscotch crimpets, peanut butter candy cakes, mm. and even like the tasty cake pie flavors. Oh. I think could make great seasonal cookie flavors like apple, like the apple pies from Tasty Cake. Oh, top notch with like a nice cup of coffee. It's like so <laughs> perfect for fall. Um, and sometimes they also have like a seasonal like pumpkin pie mm-hmm. uh, cake that you mm-hmm. can get at like Wawa or something. And also like lemon, lemon pie, Tasty Cakes. Definitely could easily be translated into a cookie form. That could be a, like such a great summer flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could I be like that. a nice like yellow icing and like a gooey um, inside. Ooh. I love a lemon cookie. I didn't think of this when you first mentioned it, but I do want to give Blueprint a little bit of credit because when they had their opening weekend, I actually went because I saw that they were collaborating with Federal Donuts, which is, you know, Philly business. Mm -hmm. They collaborated to make something called the Dough Nookie, which was Blueprint's um, sort of like signature chocolate chip cookie, but like battered in Federal Donuts, like donut batter Mm. and then fried. It was so good. Every once in a while, I just think about the Dough Nookie and I'm like, that was so good. Dough Nookie. I don't know about that name. (laughs) I was like, yeah, and I feel like I probably like my cholesterol probably did not love me that day, but You're like done. it was, it, it was so good. <laughs> that was the most Philly th- thing I've seen from one of these shops. <laughs> so we've got some cookie shops to look forward to. I think what I'm concerned about in this whole cookie boom mm-hmm. is if I have a taste for a cookie. In the middle of the night, (laughs) do these cookie brands offer sweet treats for the midnight snackers? Midnight, unfortunately, not. It's not like, you know, like insomnia, you can order cookies at like 2 a.m., which is awesome. Love that because sometimes you just need it. (laughs) Um, But these Chip City, they're open till uh, 10 p.m. on weeknights. And then on weekend nights, they're open till 11 p.m. So late, but not like late, late. Um, And Blueprint's kind of similar. They close at 11 p.m. every day. As for the other two, um, they haven't released their Philly hours yet. So that's still TBD. When's like the appropriate time to eat one of these cookies? You know, that's a really good question. Personally, I love a little treat at any time of the day. But these aren't little treats. So my suggestion is really go any time that you want a cookie but split it in half or maybe even in quarters and share it with a friend or take the other half home. Like they all, as far as the two locations that are open right now go, they both heat up in the oven pretty well later. So I would say it's a good cookie to last you. I don't know if I would eat it after a (laughs) cheesesteak. A lot. Yeah, maybe not when you're super full. (laughs) Um. You're one smart cookie, Asha. I just had to add that one in there before I let you go. All right. That was Asha Prihar, our Hey Philly newsletter editor. Asha, thank you so much for joining me on CityCast Philly. Thanks for having me, Shanae. This was a delicious conversation. (laughs) Oh, you got me. I like that one. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you're like Asha and you enjoy a sweet treat any time of the day, tell a friend and make your way down to Rittenhouse. Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.